Cyclone Ilsa much stronger and Amang over the Philippines on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 12th. State of preparedness is up a notch to Code Orange as we monitor Cyclone Ilsa which has intensified quite a lot over the course of the last 12 to 24 hours and our analyst team are now giving it Category 2 status on the Saffir Simpson scale. I think it's slightly weaker than that but it's not outside the realms of the error margins that it could be indeed stronger. 51 days until Atlantic hurricane season, not much to talk about here. The front moving through the extreme northern, northeastern part of the US towards Canada and another front well out at sea. Uh, the area where everything's going on right now, Amang there over the uh, Bicol region of the Philippines, the center of it looks like it's about to impact southeastern Luzon right now. We're giving 91W, the one on the right hand side there, a 40% chance of development in the next five days. And of course there's Ilsa, the main threat that we've got on the table right now uh, that will be impacting the Kimberley and Pilbara coasts of Australia uh, by Thursday. At the moment we're expecting landfall will be on Thursday evening local time and it could be much stronger by the time it gets there, possibly Category 4. Um, right now Ilse is looking decent, although it still is struggling a little bit with dry air intrusion by the looks of things. Towards southwest Indian Ocean, very little going on here. Um, one little disturbance over there near the Masserine Islands, but not much in terms of tropical cyclone activity. Satellite imagery looks like this and you can see big bursts of red occurring from Ilsa there. Conversely over the Philippines we're not seeing much of an impact from Ilsa rain wise and we were expecting that. Rainfall amounts were expecting maybe 200-250 millimeters in total which is much less than what you would usually get from a storm in the Philippines but still could be substantial uh, but meanwhile for Ilsa, as we look at the satellite imagery here, we could expect some areas of very high rainfall amounts near the landfall zone, which is thankfully sparsely populated along 80 Mile Beach. That's where we're expecting landfall to occur. Well to the east of Port Hedland, of course, you can see the size of this storm and of course its impacts could uh, extend to you. Uh, looking a little bit flaky on those latest images there, perhaps from dry air intrusion, but extreme bursts of convection and it's just on the edges, the fringes there of the radar coverage you can just about almost see the center of the storm here is Amang which moving into the Philippines right now just passing on the southern side of Catanduanes towards the Bicol region and then the rest of uh, southern Luzon uh, it's got a little bit more convection blowing up but still not huge amounts but definitely under there right now we could be seeing lots of rainfall there's some radar imagery you can see its movement there clearly west northwestwards and some heavy rainfall occurring all along that peninsula at this moment in time so certainly could cause some flash flooding locally in those areas Sea surface temperatures always improving of course at this time of year in the eastern Pacific they're getting warmer 30 degrees plus in one or two locations off the coast of Mexico. In the Caribbean temperatures rising there as well above 28 degrees and just about entering the Gulf now that loop current is starting to wind its way up and the Gulf Stream off the US East Coast there. And this is the Indian Ocean extremely warm in the uh, deep tropics there equatorial regions but in the Bay of Bengal it's warming up there as well. 30 degrees plus southwest indian ocean is on the wane slightly but still decent conditions extending down to mauritius 28 degrees celsius and for the coast of mozambique madagascar uh, still pulling at decent temperatures towards the australian region that enormous warm pool being eroded slightly by ilsa's presence but still a very large pool of 31 degrees celsius maybe pushing close to 32 degrees very warm conditions indeed also for the solomon islands down there very warm conditions as well 31 to 32 degrees also for Vanuatu and around 30 near the Fijian islands and Samoa 
Western Pacific, the very deep tropics, still very warm there. Where that invest is, well, the storm now was a storm, depression now, Amang, uh, still around 28 degrees Celsius, but it is noticeably cooler as it will venture towards Palilio and the rest of northern and central Luzon. Sea surface temperature anomalies generally above average in the deep tropics of the Western Pacific. The Australian regions looking good as well, and the South Pacific. Gulf of Mexico, very warm actually compared to average, but look at the extreme warm temperatures off the coast of South America right now, fueling this potential El Nino which may be on the way, those Nino regions well above average. Oceanic heat content in the southern hemisphere is starting to splinter a little bit, but still very good conditions generally and fair conditions for Fiji and the Coral Sea. Western Pacific still piping up a little bit there. Uh, this is going to continue throughout the spring into summer. Uh, and the Eastern Pacific also looking good there as well in a few spots above what it was at the peak of last season. Just goes to show how different seasons can be. So we see the quick demise of Amang there on the left hand side, just about make out the centre of it trailing along the coast of Aurora province in Isabella. And then this other system on the right hand side, that's 91W, uh, which could develop in that five day period. GFS is quite uh, convinced on that, but there's no other model support from any of the other models right now. We expect that it will probably start to come in from the other models soon, but right now it's just the GFS there leading the charge on that tropical storm forecast. Here's Ilsa really wrapping up and getting stronger. We're expecting a landfall. GFS suggesting that it will peak in the uh, upper 930s and then make landfall in the lower 940s millibar range. That would probably be a strong category 3 on the Sappho Simpson scale. Still scope for it to get a bit stronger still. Category 4 on the AU scale is being forecasted by the Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, could get to category 5 on that scale. And this is the South Pacific towards the end of that five day period as mentioned we could see something near the southern Solomon Islands starting to appear now in that shorter range and there it is can't be ignored completely there is that potential tropical cyclone forming out of a very broad uh, low there uh, around the southern Solomon Islands and then it will probably start to make towards the Coral Sea turning towards the southwest so something to watch there for the Australian East Coast long range. Rainfall estimates over the next seven days were panned right out on this map here so that you can see both impacts in Australia and the Philippines. You can see that large swathe of rainfall there and the GFS has also picked up on a secondary amount, a big burst of rainfall over the Kimberley region not far from uh, the Dampier Peninsula, up to 12 inches of further rainfall there interestingly, I'm not sure quite where it's going to come from, uh, but certainly that's what it's projecting for a little patch there near Derby, that's 300 millimeters of rainfall and over the top end some enhanced rainfall as well as the storm moves by, uh, but near the landfall zone we're looking at around uh, nearly 250 millimeters. Philippines up there towards the north of Luzon, that's the highest amounts there, getting up towards 7 inches of rainfall there. Uh, that is pushing close to 200 millimeters. But in general, most areas will probably see only around 100 millimeters, and in the cities, less. In the moderate range then, this is what we have in store for Invest 91W. There it is, moving off towards the north-northeast. Struggling for a time, may even lose tropical cyclone status for a bit there. But it does start to come back again. And there it is, wrapping back up towards the end of that loop. In fact, most of that moderate range there, it probably isn't really a tropical storm. Well, a three-day period there, a two-day period perhaps that it will be struggling before it gets itself back on its way again. Interesting to see whether that happens the way it does. Southern Hemisphere into the South Pacific, Coral Sea, this system really gets developing into a substantial tropical cyclone. You may have seen last night's tropical weather bulletin calling for a landfall on Queensland, but there it is drifting southwards again. And I'm pretty sure this happened with an earlier storm this season uh, that it was forecasted to strike Australia and it just ended up going further south. And looks like that trend is happening again here. Still a powerful storm potentially on tap there, but that is in the medium range. That's all the serious stuff done. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items as well as full season and individual storm animations by request. 
We also have our still waiting for Hode t-shirt. For goodness knows how long we will still be waiting for that. In the Silly Range, we take a look at the extended trials and tribulations of that tropical cyclone 91W. Uh, slowly trends back towards the um, Mariana Islands there as we get to the latter days of April. And really, it's still going towards the end of this loop. There it is on the 27th, right at the end of the 16-day period. So this one could last for a while if it does get going the way it does. Uh, moving northwestwards there and then back towards the north and eventually northeastwards before conditions will just not be enough at this time of year. I'm surprised it makes it that far north actually. But you can talk about that and anything else that we've covered tonight and around the world of weather on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat. Well, what happened on this day? You may remember it. It was April 12th, 2004, when a very picturesque typhoon at Sudal was not far from its peak. In fact, a secondary peak occurred on this day at Category 4 intensity. The primary peak, I think, was on the 10th, if I remember rightly, at 150 miles per hour. It still got to 140 miles per hour on the 12th as it continued westwards. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that went on to impact the Philippine Islands and was a substantial typhoon nothing else was active though interesting little disturbance there in the Indian Ocean but not a tropical cyclone back to today and now that we are in code orange I would expect that we will have some form of live content uh, as we get towards um, probably tomorrow uh, morning Australian time for Ilsa. In the Atlantic, the first name is Arlene on the list. In the Eastern Pacific, Adrian. And in the Central Pacific, it's Hone. Western Pacific, Sanvu still hasn't been named yet from Amang. Uh, but if we had that Philippine list there, we'd obviously light up Amang. That's the Philippine name. North Indian Ocean, Mocha is next up. In the Australian region now, the next name is Jasper. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, Fabienne. And in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.